Welcome to Lightning Web Components and how to create a Salesforce DX project and your first Lightning Web Component in VS Code. Let's get started. I'm here in Visual Studio Code and the first thing I need to confirm is that I've installed the right extensions. So you can see here there are a ton of extensions already on my machine, but you're going to look for the Salesforce extensions. And you can see right here in the marketplace this entry for the Salesforce extension pack. And this is what you're going to want to start with. This has a whole bunch of functionality that you'll need for developing Salesforce projects in VS Code. Now, if you, like me, are in a preview window, you might not see the Lightning Components extension listed here. So if you don't see something called the Lightning Com Web Components extension, you'll need to go ahead and search for it in the marketplace and make sure that you're also installing this Lightning Web Components extension, which will help you when you're developing your Web Component bundles. Okay, I have my extensions installed, and the next thing I need to make sure I have installed is the Salesforce CLI. This is what has the functionality that actually lets you develop against any kind of org from your local machine. So you wanna make sure you've installed the CLI. So I have everything installed, and now, the first thing I need to do is create a Salesforce DX project. And if I open up the command palette here, that's the integrated command palette, and I can see the shortcut keys to get to that. Right here on my Mac, I'm seeing Mac keys. If you're on a PC, you will see PC keys. But this is a menu that you're going to find throughout Visual Studio Code that lets you see different commands for the extensions you have installed. And if I type in SFDX, I'm getting the Salesforce CLI commands that I can use because there's an integration here with the CLI. That's one of the extensions that you installed in that extension pack bundle. And I only have three commands here. And that's because when I'm in the command palette, the DX commands that I'm gonna execute are scoped to the folder I have open. And as I showed you, I don't really have a folder open. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and create that project. So when I use the command palette to do this, if there are any flags or information that we need to pass on to this command, you're going to get it as a menu prompt. So here I'm being prompted to enter a name for my project. So we'll just call it my project. And when I hit enter, I'm then taken to a prompt of where do I want to keep this on my local file system? And I'm going to put this in my SFDX folder that I already have going on. And behind the scenes now, the Salesforce CLI is running that command for me. I don't have to memorize the syntax. That's what the command palette lets me do. And you can see that also now my window has automatically reloaded. And on this reload, now in the file explorer, instead of seeing a prompt to open a file, I'm already in that project I just created. And the Salesforce CLI has already created a few configuration files for me. And these files are what tell the CLI that it's operating in the context of a Salesforce DX project. And that matters because when we open up the command palette again, and this time when I search for Salesforce DX commands, you can see I get a whole lot more functionality because the commands that you're gonna find in the command palette are again based on the context of the folder that you're in. And more functionality comes when you're inside a Salesforce DX project. The files that really matter are of course our SFDX project JSON, which just has some basic truths about our project. And this is the default shape created by the CLI. And you use the package directories to indicate where it is your metadata is stored. I only have one package directory by default, your project can have more than one project directory. You're just going to get one with the initial command. And it's this force app directory right here. You can declare a namespace if you're working with an org with namespaces. And then at the bottom is where you configure the types of org you're working with, whether you need to use a specific login URL and the API version. This is just a default for the project as a whole. If you want to specify a certain kind of scratch org or those ephemeral temporary orgs, that you can create from the command line. That's set here inside this config folder. This project scratch definition JSON file decides what kind of scratch org do you want to create. So right now on line three, I'm creating a developer edition. This could be professional edition or enterprise edition. You would change that value here. The org name is by default provided by the CLI. You could change this to match your particular project or your company, but give it a name that means something to you rather than the default provided as a best practice. And then org preferences is where you can decide what special features about the org do you want to enable. Do you want to enable Einstein or Service Cloud or Einstein Analytics? You can do all of that through org preference settings. By default, we're going to get a developer edition org with Lightning enabled. That's what you're looking at right now. 
The last file that really matters for your Salesforce DX projects is the force ignore. Like a git ignore, this tells the CLI what kinds of files to not try to work with when you're doing metadata deploys and retrieves or force source push and pull if you're working with a scratch org. So it makes sure that the CLI is only working with the metadata you actually want it working with. And there are some values provided by default right here, and you can add more values yourself. And of course you see the link to the docs that give you the syntax for modifying this file. Okay, we have a project started and now I need to create a lightning web component. And again, I could use the command palette, but there's another way that I can interact with the Salesforce CLI and that's the integrated terminal. And you get the shortcut keys right here for it. Let's pop out this integrated terminal. And now you can see not only am I able to use say bash commands, but this is already located in the directory as my files. I'm working in the same place in both places. So when I execute my Salesforce DX command to create a lightning web component, my force lightning component create command, I'm doing it within my project. So now let's execute this command. And behind the scenes, we're cre it's creating three files for me. And if we open up our project explorer again, and expand our force app folder and our LWC parent folder, you can see I now have a my component created and the HTML, the JavaScript and the XML file are provided for you by the CLI right out of the box. I have two other JSON files here that are provided by the Lightning Web Components extension. They're specific to dealing with this extension in Visual Studio Code, and it's to give you things like IntelliSense as you're working on your project. So just know they're added by the Salesforce extension. That's also why they show up in the Force Ignore by default, so that if you have them in your project, they won't interfere with deployment. So I've shown you how to access the CLI through the command palette, up top, we've also directly interacted with the CLI right here in a terminal window. And there's a third way that you can get at the Salesforce CLI when you're working in Visual Studio Code. And that's something called the context menu. And it appears here in the file explorer. If I say right click on this default folder, you can see down at the bottom here, these SFDX commands, these are also Salesforce CLI commands. I have even fewer commands here because again, this is operating on the context of where I right clicked. So if I right click even farther down, say in my component JS file, I don't even have Salesforce DX commands. Some takeaways of what we just showed, you can interact with the, the CLI in multiple ways in VS Code. You can do it directly through the integrated terminal or in different menus throughout the application. In the command palette and the context menu, make sure to remember that commands are scoped to the individual file or folder context. And there are three files that particularly identify your project as a Salesforce DX project as we walked through. If you wanna learn more, go to the short link you'll see the latest and greatest on Trailhead in a trail mix dedicated to Lightning Web Components. Thanks for joining me. We'll catch you next time.